conceptual stuff. Jay sounded better than Jay. Things people talk Real about. Talk, I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everything is going well on your end. I am not going to be uh, very long in what I have to talk about here, but I did want to uh, give my input. Uh, as the talk of reopening the country uh, as a whole and some states reopening, there's also the talk about the reopening of Korean uh, nail salons, predominantly Korean nail salons, but Asian-owned uh, nail salons, and there is a lot of pushback and negative uh, rhetoric being spewed about our sisters patronizing these Asian-owned uh, salons. And so I was reared by my great-grandparents, and one of the things that my grandfather taught me early in life was you can come to me about anything but when you bring a problem to me the first thing is that I'm going to ask you is what are you planning on doing about it your solution doesn't have to be the end-all answer but you need to show me that you've at least tried to provide a solution for the problem in other words we can't only identify the problem if we're not going to offer solutions the simple answer is yes the simple answer is you need to support black-owned salons. There are some problems in those areas. Number one is there aren't many. Uh, and I know because my wife has gone out of her way to try to patronize black-owned nail salons and black nail techs. She's gone as far as going to a person who had a complete salon set up in the middle of her living room at her apartment. Uh, for the purpose and it was just too much that went on. I'm not going to say what because I don't want to serve or feed a stereotype. So then what is the answer? Number one is we are not going to get the powers that be the traditional funding sources like banks to fund these businesses. So we're going to have to be willing get back uh, to what I'm saying that first and foremost, no, we should not uh, patronize those who, first of all, don't show us the respect that they should in our community, don't bring back, um, don't bring back the, any of the dollars that we put into it. In other words, you've got Asian-owned businesses, Arab-owned businesses, uh, and some white businesses in the black community that simply do not bring any of the money you put into their businesses back into the community. Um, that's the reality of it. We are constantly be bleeding out or hemorrhaging our money into economies that don't serve us. Uh, we put money into black, I mean, into white owned banks and uh, on a regular basis. And those banks don't lend to black businesses or black individuals on a consistent basis. And so what do you have? You are serving an interest that does not serve you. So that's the problem. So how do we solve the problem? Here's the thing that we have to do. Stop maligning our sisters for wanting to take care of themselves and to have it done at a certain level. I am going to challenge my sisters. Find people who treat you with respect, regardless of their nationality, regardless of you know, whether it's an Asian owned business or a black owned business, the first thing, the person has to treat you with respect. The person has to give you something that is equal or greater in value than what you are giving them in money. That's any exchange in life. Make sure you're getting equal or greater in value in your exchange period. You should also want to do that as a business owner, as a service provider. Always give more than what you're asking for, and you'll always be on the top end of the deal at the end of the day. Um, but when it comes to this dilemma, we're going to have to get into the idea of self-funding. We're going to have to get in the idea of having mechanisms in place to where we self-fund, that we begin to create 
financial spending agendas that focus on business development, residential development, academic and educational programs so that we become self-sufficient. We can't deride our women for wanting to take care of themselves, having their hair done, uh, getting their nails done, getting their lashes done, and not provide them with a viable solution. Here's the other end of that. How many of our children are we rearing so that the family business is the nail salon? See, I grew up in a beauty shop. It was called a beauty shop back then. It was It's a salon now, but it was a beauty shop when I grew up. And I grew up in it. And my grandmother owned it. My, my mom became a stylist. I have uh, one sister who, 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 who became a stylist. I have a daughter who, who does hair. And it's a family business. It, 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 it didn't start out that way, but then it became an idea. Find you something and train someone who's following you to take it on and have a, a connectivity to it. What we have to understand is that we're going to be responsible for creating uh, a base of youth who want to take this on. You've got to have enough people who want to do this to replace the people we're saying we're going to boycott. Understand what I'm saying? If we're saying we're not going to serve, or we're not going to patronize Lee's Nails, there has to be someone replacing the business that Lee is serving. And there has to be a specific plan outlaid of how we're going to trans transition from dealing with Asian-owned uh, spas in our community and moving towards Black-owned communities. Uh, sitting up and trying to belittle or attack our sisters because of where they get their, nail, their nails done when it's truly not enough salons out there to service them on a black perspective, from a black black owned uh, perspective, is first of all not fair and it's not realistic. Uh, I'm I'm very big on getting any business out of the black community that isn't putting back into the black community. If you're eating out of the black community, you need to be putting something in the black community besides your business. There needs to be a flow of funds that comes out of your profit that serves a need in the black community. That should be a demand of any business, whether it's black owned or not in the black community, is that a certain portion of your proceeds is going to go to in, uh, in better and empower the community. Some of it needs to be invested in education, some of it needs to be invested in resi residential uh, development, community development, business development. There's so much that needs to be done. And if you're going to have a business in the black community, you cannot, I don't care how good your business is, I don't care how well you do what you do, if you're not taking some of the money that's coming through that business and putting it back into the community, you shouldn't be welcomed in the community. You should not be allowed to come eat in our community and then watch us starve. But we have to be responsible enough and committed enough to send that message that if we do, sir, if we do patronize you, we're going to have to see A, B, C, or D, or we'll shut it down. We will shut it down if we don't see this. If you're going to sit up with us, show us some respect by pouring into those who are feeding your kids, paying for your kids' education, paying for your home, and everything else. That has to be a part of our mindset. That has to be something that's inculcated into the psyche of young black children early in life. You don't patronize someone who does not cater to your interests, not just in what they're selling you, but into all other interests. And that's a problem that we have, is that We'll sit up and go off on sisters because they're getting their nails done at an Asian salon or getting their lashes done at an Asian parlor. But we won't come up with ideas of how we can trans translate that into black owned businesses so that they actually have somewhere to go where they can get the same level of service, the same level of quality. And I know it's a couple of them out there, but it's far too few to actually service the great need of all these sisters that want their stuff done. So what do we do? First of all, we need to have funding available for those who want to do it, not just for the business to open, but also for the schooling. You have to go for a certain number of hours to be qualified as a nail tech.
You have to pass the state board in order to be qualified as a nail tech. We should be financing that. We shouldn't want our babies to go into debt in order to start their business. We, we should want them to start their business as, as with as little debt as possible so they are quickly moving into profitability. That opens up so many doors. The quicker you move into pro profitability, the more value your business has, the greater your net worth, and the more fluid funding becomes for expansion down the road. It's important to understand all this. It's important to teach this. They're not going to get this in a traditional education in public edu uh, through public education in public schools. That's something that's got to be learned and taught in the home, learned and taught in community centers within the black in the black enclave. That has to be done. So yes, we hate to see uh, Lee's nails and in in in, in Wynn's nails and all these other nails that are going to pop up. Uh, in Texas, I think mid-May, they're going to be opening back up and sisters are going to be flocking to them. But uh, I think it's not fair to ask sisters to sit around and not do what they're used to doing in self-care and in self-love. I think that's kind of being harsh. I understand where it comes from. And I agree with the principle that we need to be supporting black businesses, but they have to be black businesses to support. So we have to actually think about this. We are acting as if there are enough black owned salons to service all the sisters who need to get their hair done, who need to get their nails done, who need to get all this other stuff done that are being, you know, where it's been done by someone other than a black person. I think that we have to be ready to talk about this, ready to sit down as community leaders and come up with spending agendas, funding agendas, and plans of how we're going to prepare the next generation to simply and, and seamlessly move into these slots to where we phase out non-black owned businesses that won't support our community over the next 10 years or so. You know, we, we have to actually come up with a long term plan. Being upset about something doesn't change it. Sitting up and whining and complaining about something does not change it. So the way you change something is identifying the problem and coming up with solutions and then taking action. It's that simple. So, yeah, I get it. But let's ease up on the sisters and start looking for solutions. Let's start talking about how we can fund and get behind black owned businesses. In this instance, black owned nail salons, black owned eyelash parlors, black owned whatever other kind of spas they may have uh, that our sisters are going to to uh, experience self-care and to be pampered. Uh, let's, let's transition that. Let's see what that looks like over a five to 10 year period. And then let's put it into motion. Other than that, we're just sitting up and striking out at the easiest target. You know, my thing is if they're in your community and they're not pouring back into your community, you should be taking action. But whining and complaining is not an action. And so I just wanted to drop that on you. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Uh, I'll be dropping a few, th few other things on you as the day progresses. Have a good one. I'm out. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.